Howdy folks, how are you all doing? Cub here, and welcome back to my guide to Tinker's Construct. This is episode 4, and in this one we're going to be looking at some of the other things that we have kind of glossed over uh, in the last three videos. So the first video we covered how to build basic tools, the second video was all about the smeltery, and then the third video was all about kind of the advanced tools, the tier 2 tools. And all of those have been about building tools and weapons. This time around we're going to be looking at some of the other things that this game, or this mod adds to the game. Uh, including items and in different areas that you can go to and let's start with this one now I know what you're thinking you're thinking this looks just like any other House in any other village and you're right. It is just a regular house in a regular village, but it's what's inside That's important check this out. This is a tinker's construct house These spawn randomly in villages in fact I've never been to a village that didn't have one of these in it and it has everything you need to get started with this mod and pretty much Minecraft like this has even got a crafting table that is pretty legit. It's got everything you need. Your tool station, your pattern chest with some patterns already created. You got your part builder. You got your stencil table. Over here you got a piston, which is great if you want to add knockback to a tool. And in this chest you'll have a random assortment of starter items. That's pretty cool. Next up we've got Slime Islands. And these guys are really cool. As you can see they just kind of spawn up here in the sky. This one spawned right above my house. I got really lucky with the spawn. There's a village there and a slime island here. You can either nerd pull up to it or if you are in a mod that has flying abilities, definitely fly up here, or a mod pack I should say. This water is special. As you can see it is a liquid slime and blue slimes have a chance of spawning here. As you can see you can also collect some of this stuff here. Let's switch back into creative real fast. Congealed blue slime, we'll talk more about that later. You can also get congealed green slime, and these trees here have a chance of dropping saplings, which means you can grow, grow these trees down there on the ground, and you can actually get some, some uh, like an endless supply of, uh, of, of green slime, is what I'm trying to say. I'm struggling to say. That's cool. Me and Bjorn actually plant some of those in our FTB series. You guys probably haven't seen that yet, though. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot of other things here, except for, well, more congealed blue slime, some slimy grass, and if you dig deep enough, I think there's some kind of rock? Nope, guess not. Alrighty guys, for the rest of this video, we're going to be here in this magical world of items. And uh, I'm going to be showing off some of the other cool items that you can build in this game, their recipes and their uses. Let's start off with this one here since it's seen a lot, and it's going to be seen a lot in this video. It's called a drying rack. If we look at the recipe, pretty basic. It's just some uh, wood slabs. You can use any wooden slab you want. Unfortunately, this one does not change color based on the wood you choose, so it really doesn't matter. As you can see, they have kind of two purposes. You can either store items in them so they can be on display, or you can hang meat from them, and it'll make jerky. So you can hang beef up there, and over time, it'll become jerky. Look at this. You can even hang a monster up there. So that's uh, just zombie flesh. Hang it up there, and it'll eventually become jerky. That's really cool. Easy to build. Then we've got wooden rails. So if you ever thought, you know what? I'm spending too much iron on rails. Like that. You can build these out of wood. You get four of them. And as you can see, they work just like regular rails. You can hop in here and ride around. Whee! Should be noted that these guys here are the regular powered rails, though. There's not a wooden powered rail recipe. Sorry about that. Next up, we've got barricades. These are really cool, really easy to build. Look at this recipe. It doesn't get any simpler than that. It's just wood. So easy. And you can stack these guys up either one, two, three, or four in a single block. They do not act like fences. You can jump right on top of them. I think what they're mostly useful for is just decoration or if you're building a house and you don't have access to sand to make glass, you can use these guys in place of your windows and that's really cool. Next up, we've got these guys. These guys are cool. This is kind of like what cactus should be, all right? And building these is very simple. Just some sugar cane and a cross will give you five puji sticks and I'm sure I'm saying that incorrectly. But they can be placed either one, two, three, four, or five in a single square. And when you hit them, it damages you, just like cactus, but it also gives you a slowness effect. And the amount of damage done is based on how many of these little guys you have in one space. So, as you can see, they can actually get up and do quite a bit of damage. And the big advantage of these guys is you can throw stuff on top of them, you know, over cactuses. If you throw something on a cactus, it'll just destroy the item. These will not destroy the item. So if you use these to trap monsters, will not destroy their items when they die. It also adds slowness, and it also can be lined up like this, whereas you've got a stagger cactus. Now, of course, cactus can also be used as a wall. These cannot. As you can see, you can still get over them. But if you have a line of them and monsters are coming at you, they'll usually die before they reach you. So that is really cool. And that is everything for this block. Next up, we have got slime. And you can actually do a lot of cool things with slime in this mod. Uh, I just showed you guys how to get it. 
by going up to that island. You can also collect it by killing slimes, of course. And this mod adds a blue slime, which spawns from that water. Did I mention that before? I can't remember. Either way, you've got your two basic slime balls. You've got a gelatinous slime, which is blue, and a regular slime, which is green. And if we open these guys up, you can see that they have quite a few uses. Let's start with the blue one. They can be used to create name tags, which is a recipe you don't actually have in the normal game, or game, I should say. You can also create leads with them, so that's really useful. And gelatinous slime, four of them will make a, a, gel, um, a congealed blue slime, which is useful as well. You can also carve them into bricks or use them with TNT to create SDX, which we'll talk about here in a minute. That's, oh, I'm sorry, there's some other things you could do with it. You can put a bunch of them together with sand and dirt to create a slimy mud, which is used to create slime crystals, which is used for adding abilities to your tools. Continue to look at the different uses here. Uh, just more SDX and uh, more SDX and a slime channel. Now these are cool. We're about to look at these as well. But as you see, it takes some gelatinous slime and some redstone. Really cool. We'll look at those. We'll look at the bounce pad. You can also use them in place as regular slime on your sticky pistons. Nothing too interesting there. And they can be used along with blaze powder to make a magma cream. Now the green one, believe it or not, exactly the same. It can be used for all the exact same things. Except for, in this case, it creates a green slime uh, green slime block instead of a blue one. Nothing big there. As you can see, it's pretty much all just the same stuff. We'll throw those guys up here. And now let's look at the other items you can make with these. The gelatinous slime, or congealed green slime, congealed blue slime, again, the same, and can be used for pretty much the same thing. They can be combined with a redstone to create your slime channel, or just turned into blue slime balls. Now let's look at these guys. So this is your slime channel, and this is your bounce pad. And these are probably the two coolest things you can do with slime. Okay, so the slime channel, which you can see right here, look at this, you can get into it, and it'll actually carry you, or it'll carry items along a path. So if you're in a mod pack that maybe you don't have pipes, or maybe you just don't like working with pipes, you can use these guys to transport items. The bounce pad, this is cool. It does what you think it would, it'll bounce. But you can heck, you don't have to use it with a channel, right? You can just bounce on it, it'll throw you. But when hooked up to a channel, it'll actually carry items items along a course and then throw them and it's kind of buggy it doesn't always work very well you can also use the slime channels to carry items into hoppers Oop, there you go this is just a vanilla hopper that is very useful and you can combine that with a chest so it'll automatically feed to the chest now this is something i haven't tried yet sending an item from a bounce pad oh goodness oh hey 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 look at that it does work not the most fluid thing i've seen but it looks like as long as you have a high enough wall, that will work. So that's bounce, pad, that's bounce pads. These guys right here. Oh, and I should note, the direction that these things are flowing is going to be based on the direction you place them. So if I'm facing this way, throw this guy down, it's going to carry me this way. Same thing with this here. And they don't have to carry items in a straight course. You can go at an angle here. As you see, it'll carry items at an angle. Same thing with these. You can bounce forward. Bounce to the side. You know, very useful. Very cool. Put these back up in the item frames and we will continue. Now we have some blocks that you can build in this game. This guy here is a chisel. You make it in your little tool station. For this purpose, we're using uh, manilion, but it doesn't really matter what you use. If you take something like stand sandstone, put them together. Look at this. You can create different types of sandstone chiseled you know, all the way through the spectrum, pretty much. I have a few examples of things you can use up here. For instance, we got stone, lapis, obsidian. Uh, this is one of the blocks that actually comes in the mods and brownstone. And uh, you can run a bit faster on it, in case you guys didn't know. If you want to put a bunch of brownstone down, you can run on it a bit faster. Pretty cool. And of course, you can pretty it up a bit, and it still maintains its awesomeness. Look at that. So you can go through and create a bunch of cool block designs using the chisel. And um, now you, there are several other blocks you can do this with. You don't have to just use the ones I'm showing you here, but I just kind of picked these for demonstration, de demonstration purposes. Now over here, you can also create glass. Now these are stained glasses, but now that Minecraft already has that added in the game by default in 1.7, I believe, this isn't as useful. However, there's something you should note about this glass. Look at this, it's completely clear. Isn't that awesome? So if you don't like how the Minecraft, Minecraft glass has the little uh, like spots in it, you can get this thing here completely clear, see-through. The recipe, well, there isn't a recipe. You just put sand or glass into your smeltery and then pour this stuff out. And, well, there you go. If you want to dye it, dyeing it is pretty simple. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. Just throw in your color of choice into the center. 
boom, and you can recolor them if you want to. Very basic. Oh, and you don't have to do a whole bunch at once. Oops, not what I meant to do. Recipe. You can just do one at a time. So that's cool. Unfortunately, if you break it, oh, well, look at that. You can pick it up. It is infinitely better than Minecraft glass. Check that out. I uh, hope you guys are sticking with me and keeping up. We've got a couple more things to look at. This is an ore berry, and this is a gravel ore. And, uh, oh boy, how do I describe these things? So gravel ore, that's pretty basic. It's just gravel inside of, or it's ore inside of gravel. Take it out with a shovel. You can smelt it down to get your items. Pretty cool. They've got one of, well, everything you could possibly want. And uh, as you can see, it's a lot easier just to pick it up with a shovel. So carry your shovel around, find these guys, very useful. And then the ore berries, well, they're berries, but eh, it's ore, and uh, well, mm, it's kind of like a bush that grows ore. And as you can see, you've got your iron, your gold, what is this, copper, tin, and aluminum. And you can just find these in the wild underground, and they do have to stay in a bit of darkness in order to be planted and grown. You can check them out here. These haven't quite matured yet, but when they are matured, they'll look like this one here. Right-click them to get this guy. When you get this guy, you can smelt it. And it'll give you a single, single copper nugget, which can be com oh, ow. which can be put together with eight other of its little copper nugget brothers to create a copper ingot. Not really that efficient, but still useful. Now you'll notice this guy here does not have anything above it. That's because it doesn't produce berries. It produces essence, which gives you XP. Check that out. Pretty awesome. Next up is one of my favorite items in this mod. I love this guy. Okay, check this thing out. This is called a crafting station. Not to be confused with the crafting table. This is way better. It's real easy to build. All you gotta do is take your crafting table and put it in your inventory. You don't even have to do it in another crafting table. You can open up your inventory and there's a little two by two section there. You can do it right there. Get yourself a crafting station. This is so much cooler, not just because it looks different, but look at this. If you open it up and you put an item in there, right? Like you're building and you're saying, oh no, I forgot this item. You can walk away from it and leave it. Walk away. Break the wrist and walk away. No one's going to get that reference. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, if this item is too big for you, you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, gee, I don't really have enough space for that. Well, guess what? You can get it in a smaller form. All you got to do is get three crafting tables, put them along this way, and you get six of these little crafting stations. Or, you know, you can just put one of these in your inventory and get one crafting station. But, I mean, come on. Six of them, you definitely need six of them. They work just the same, except for they're half blocks. And you can get almost anything like this. You can get a slab, a uh, furnace, you can get a stencil table. Look at this. You can have your entire setup all in half slabs. Check that out. Now the furnace recipe, I should note, has a slightly different recipe than all the other items. You actually just use cobblestone slabs to build this one instead of building one and then putting it in your inventory and cutting it in half. The rest of them on the, on the other hand though, the stencil table for instance, if I can find, there it is. Same recipe, just take the stencil table, put it in your crafting grid and you'll get your miniaturized stencil table. Very cool, safe space. And yeah, I like it. Alrighty guys, now there's some other items I forgot to set up an area for, but I just spawned them in real quick. If we open it up, you'll see that we have a couple of tabs across the top here. If we click on this one here, we see we have the option to add some different items to our character, including the exo armor. Now this stuff can't be built yet. As you see, the recipe is just bronze large plate, so I guess you can technically build it. I was wrong, absolutely wrong. It has a few features according to the wiki. And again, I'm going off the wiki. I don't really know a whole lot about this stuff. But apparently it'll give you 10 max health, 50% knockback resistance, 10 attack damage, and 150% more speed, which, I don't know, I feel kind of faster. I don't know, that might just be in my head. But that's pretty cool. That's still a work in progress, so I wouldn't count on that being too useful to you right now. Although, look at it, it looks awesome. It looks like I'm about to take off in an airship. I am Skylord Lysander. That's not at all how Lysander talks. Now, the other two items that are usable and are really cool is the knapsack. And if we get rid of that, you'll see the knapsack right here. Very simple recipe, leather, gold ingots, and iron tough tool rods. So you're gonna have to get the tough rods. Sorry, guys. You can put it up here and it adds, to get off and back on, another area to store stuff in. Awesome. So it's like a, um, like a backpack, except where you're actually carrying it on your back instead of your inventory. That is cool. The other items are these heart canisters. And if we check out the recipe to these, you get a heart, which can drop off of monsters. You get a jeweled apple, which is diamonds and an apple. I know, kind of pricey, but it's worth it. You combine that with a necrotic bone and an empty canister, which is just aluminum. 
and you can build these guys and watch what happens when we put these on so we can stack up to 10 of them put them on our character and look down there at my heart as you can see they're starting to build up it's actually creating a second layer of health over my current health so if we Ooh, let me demonstrate this well you'll see here in a second actually but basically if we get attacked it'll take off that second layer and it'll have to run down that entire second layer before it gets to our first layer and after that it'll all heal back up our first layer and then our second layer we basically have double the health is what i'm trying to say and i'm struggling very much to get it out the last item that we have to look at here is the sdx which we talked about before it comes in green also comes in blue this stuff is pretty cool if we open it up, it's basically like a hyped up TNT, if you will, and it's really easy to build. I think it's definitely worth it. It's just slime and TNT. You can use other things. You can use a ball of glue or a gelatinous slime or like a ball of blood. And um, yeah, basically you build it, grab a lever, check this stuff out. We're going to make our escape here, people. We're making our escape. Oh, it tends to disappear. That's a little bug. Whoa. Oh, sweet. Look at this. We can get out of here, though. Also, you may know that there's a lot of items in here. That's because it doesn't destroy anything that it blows up. It just throws it down onto the ground, which is great. So we could actually, in theory, yeah, look at that. Find our lover. Throw it down. And do it all again. Okay, get away. Amazing. Well, guys, that pretty much sums it up for this video. That is all of the other cool items in this mod. I'm sure I might have missed a couple if I did. Tell folks about them down in the comments and uh, let them know what they can do with them. And if you want to, you can go ahead and give me some feedback because I've got one more episode in this Cubs Guide series to Tinker's Construct. And it's going to be a community sort of driven episode where I talk about some of the comments that I've received, either suggestions or ideas or corrections because I haven't gotten it all right 100% of the time. If you have anything you want to contribute, go ahead and comment, and I will be posting that in a couple of days. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching. I hope this series has helped you better understand Tinker's Construct, and I hope that you can now use it to its fullest abilities, and uh, stay in school, don't do drugs, and um, hmm, what, other's good, what else is good advice? Uh, don't, don't rob gas stations. Don't ever eat the yellow snow unless you're curious as to the flavor. Otherwise, don't do it. It's a bad idea. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye.